Hello everybody! I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying warm. We are having a real cold snap right now and I wanted to do a video today focusing on some products that I absolutely love but they're not really new and I found myself kind of struggling with this as I was coming up with my um, list of best finds of the year, you know, and it was all new stuff that I came up with over the course of 2019 when I did that video like mini Emily Awards. I found myself making like a sub list of more favorites that I had, but they weren't really new finds of the year. You know what I mean? They're just things that have honestly some of them been around a really long time and it's pretty much going to amount to a full face. So I thought I could just put that together for you today and it would give me a great opportunity to talk about some of these things that have been in my collection a while that have just been on the market for quite some time that I really, really like. And I think it's also a great gateway to um, some of the kinds of videos that I want to be bringing you. I did sort of a Twitter poll just asking for your feedback. Back. What I wanted to know was, um, what are the videos that you would be most likely to watch that don't incorporate any newly purchased products? And I asked people to be as creative or unusual or whatever as they wanted to be, and I got some great ideas. Um, a lot of you guys brought to light some videos that maybe I'd done in the past that you'd like to see more of, or just some brand new ideas in general. So I've made a huge to-do list, and I think it'll be great to um, put more of a focus on using what I have, shopping my stash, that kind of thing. And really just just seeing the joy in your own collection, not just being focused on all the new, 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 even though new reviews are fun and I'm not going to stop like reviewing new products because, well, I think maybe for some people you've been rubbed the wrong way. Like if there's a new product, the reviewer is by default just going to love it and push it and plug it and try to get you to buy it or whatever. And you guys know that's not my style. I'll give everything an honest review. And there are many things that just because they're new, I'll try them and it may definitely not be a recommendation. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, now that that's out of the way. Let's go ahead and get started. And this product here, this foundation, um, I did feature it somewhere along the line this past year, talking about some of the most affordable drugstore items, and it is this Rimmel Stay Matte Foundation. And this is kind of like a moussey texture, and there's actually a L'Oreal one that is very, very similar to this, but this one is going to come in, I think, at or just under $5. And I wear it in light buff, and the coverage is incredible. And if I really have my skin nicely prepped underneath, it wears great all day and it's not going to look cakey. Um, that being said, if you are a super, super like really dry textured skin, this may not be your favorite. It may not be savable, you know, with great moisture underneath. I'm not sure. But for me, normal skin type, a little bit dry sometimes, I can prep my skin really well and love the effect of this. And um, there were a couple of other sort of rediscovered foundations that I've really fallen into lately. One of them being the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear, which I talked talked about in my Sephora video, and also the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow, which I think is a great, just terrific lightweight foundation. I had come to the realization over the past year that it reminded me a lot of the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder, um, which I thought gave a great kind of subtle radiance to the skin, and so does the Pro Glow. I've just really enjoyed that over the past year, but this is kind of like my current favorite here, this uh, Rimmel, and I love it with the Beauty Blender. Beauty Blender is best for me as far as getting it all worked in but the coverage is so smooth and even and granted I'm not going for this every day this kind of coverage but when I want it it's there my phone's being extra loud today but this is that kind of mousse-like texture, you know, like you squeeze it out and it's got this almost fluffy semi-thickness to it. And so a beauty blender works great to get that worked into the skin and it doesn't set too fast. It's not like hard to work with. But the coverage is just really hard to argue with that, you know, like I'm so even everywhere. I would almost venture to say it's like concealer optional skin, you know. Now the concealer, this is totally nothing new. This is like OG YouTube right here, but the instant age rewind brightener talk about an empty that I'm working toward I've just got a little bit left in here but um, these concealers I think are so good they're a really nice like coverage level paired with lightweight consistency I think um, they're a little less coverage than a shape tape or an elf camo concealer but when your foundation is doing this much work for you this little level of brightness is kind of all I feel like I really want but it is gonna add some coverage too 
So I just find myself dabbing this in around the under eye area. It might look like I'm applying a lot, but this is a pretty sheer amount. I'll even let it come down around the nose just for extra coverage on any redness and a little bit on the chin just for brightness there. And then just use that same beauty blender if you want to. Bring in a brush. Sometimes I bring in a brush just to hit that inner corner a little bit more effectively, but the brightness is so nice with this. And I think ever since having a baby, this product, this concealer, I have just fallen in love with all over again. And sometimes I'll just layer it over another concealer. If I've got a lighter look all around and I just really want to maximize the coverage, pop on a concealer and then give just like a couple dabs of this over the top and almost mix it right then and there on your face and it works great. But here we go. We've got that matte skin, but now suddenly it's got a little more brightness, a little more dimension going on. The next thing I've been enjoying big time, and I mean Rimmel kind of dominating here for a couple of these face steps, and it's their Stay Matte Powder. This shade in the color Sandstorm has been so good for setting the under eye area. Now I set it very lightly. I don't use a lot of product at all, and something about the composition of this product, like I never feel like my brush picks up a whole big large amount off of the uh, powder. It's just not super soft, but it adds a little coverage. And even at the tail end of my look, sometimes I'll check myself out and I'll be like, okay, I could use just a little bit more evenness right here, kind of the sides of the nose. You know where we have a little contour that might dip in from our under eye area there? And I just pop some of this on and I swear it evens that whole area and brings it back to life. So even at the tail end of my makeup, I might do that. Um, but at the start, just kind of dabbing it around the T-zone using my e.l.f. small tapered brush and giving a little pressing motion here. And I feel like I'm really just rocking the coverage because this, I'm so pleased with this. And from this point on, we get to take full control over what kind of glow we have. You know, the amount of blush, the amount of highlight, whatever. But our foundation and the concealer and the powder have totally evened us out. Um, this next thing, it wasn't really on my list, so to speak, of biggest like favorites, but it isn't a new product and it has been mentioned in a favorite video recently. It's my Rimmel Radiance Brick. Um, I just have this in the shade medium. It's a bronzer that has a little bit of glow and as you can see multiple tones and I just you know we use this lightly a little bit around the hairline. You're gonna see it's a very subtle effect on my skin but if you are looking for a good just general bronzer that's not too dark not too light and you're kind of about my skin tone you may really enjoy it, or you might look into some of the other tones this is available in. But they call it Radiance Brick, and it's not really like that glowy, you know? It's got a little bit of a satin finish, I'd say, on the skin, which ends up coming off really natural. Nothing like major metallic in this. For blush, it's all about CoverGirl for me, CoverGirl Cheekers Blush, the Instant Cheekbones Blushes. They are so good, so underrated. A thing I would totally look at and say, well, it wasn't a new find of 2019, but it's definitely definitely a top product for me and I love so many different shades. It's really a fun line to experiment with because as far as the Cheekers blushes go, they've got a big variety in there. And one that I especially love is this color called Pink Candy. It's just a matte blush, but this light cool pink is so, so pretty. It's really, really fresh on the skin. It gives a lot of life and it doesn't look just like that. You know, when I blend it out on my skin, I don't know, you might say, well, I can identify that you put on a pink blush, but it's not like you're seeing that color. I think it's a really, really youthful tone. Um, like I said, this is matte, so your shimmer is gonna get to come from your uh, highlighter. But it's just so gentle, but so, so beautiful. Oh, I'm getting my hair all across my face here. But you cannot go wrong with that line. Like, it's so much fun. I love Brick Rose. If you like something a little bit more um, deeper, neutral, soft sable, a great option as well. But don't shy away from this pink because look at that beautiful flush. It looks so kind of like coming from within. And then for a highlight, talk about nothing new here. Mary Luminizer, anyone? <laughs> um, I especially love the packaged quad here, the Luminizer Squad, because they give you the Mary Luminizer and the Cindy Luminizer, which is kind of like a soft peach color. Uh, Penny Luminizer is more golden, and I really love, like my second favorite probably to Mary Lou is the Emma Lou, because this one is very cool and just gives a beautiful kind of icy sheen to the skin. Um, I'm going to use Mary Luminizer because it's the biggest like OG out of that whole bunch. 
And you know, I love playing with different highlighters. I love seeing the different effects you can get, but this one is like just a really nice kind of pearly sheen highlight, but you really do see it, you know? It's always gonna look good no matter what. You could overdo it with this, let's be honest. Like most highlights, you could go too far, but there's no funky texture. There's no like large particles in there. It's like if you were to pick just a classic highlighter that's just really doing it right, very basic, but yet beautifully glowing. Um, this is it. And then I'm going to set all this with my Urban Decay All Nighter. I hadn't specifically put this on my list either, but let's face it, Urban Decay All Nighter, I mean, this would be the thing I would reach for if I want the best staying power and a little bit toned down look of any powders on my skin. And I do think that's important when you're using the Rimmel Stay Matte you definitely want to put some highlight on because it restores that glow and then set your face for sure. I gave it about six mists here. This is the summer solstice scent, but you know, just standard all nighter is fine. For brows, really the pick of the year for me was something new, a new find of 2019, and it's the Tattoo Studio Pomade. Looking back through my stuff, I didn't feel like I had a really like old product that was coming to light for me, so this is just sort of the thing. So some of you guys said, because I was talking about in my Get Ready With Me video, how some days like I skip the coffee because I'm just kind of in a hurry to get up here and get things moving and just don't want to take the time downstairs to do it. Like today I skipped the coffee, but some of you said, just get a mini Keurig for your makeup room. And I'm like, oh, so I looked it up and there are some like adorable, really small sized Keurigs. And I kind of feel like that would be an awesome thing up here. So I ordered one and I'm gonna have like make a little coffee nook and <laughs> that'll probably be a whole video in itself. I don't know. You guys would probably be like, come on in. I wanted a video about makeup, not babies or coffee. Sorry. <laughs> But uh, some of you might enjoy that. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know your feedback in the comments section. And while we're doing brows here and just chatting, um, anybody who's spent any time on social media, like sometimes you get a not nice comment, right? And I feel like we're all guilty at times. I mean, the advice everybody on the outside will give you is just let it roll off. You know, don't think about it. Don't don't let it, you know, sink in. Don't let it penetrate your your mind and that's all good advice i'm not saying that's bad advice but you know we're, we are human beings and sometimes it's hard to just like shake that stuff off right away and the other night i was nursing rhett it was like i don't know 2 a.m or something 2 30 and i open up twitter and i just got a scalding tweet out of the blue like just a really mean terrible tweet actually um, and it it burned for for a minute or two but then I kind of decided like I'm not going to let this person or this what they chose to say take power over my day you know I'm actually gonna set out with the intention of having like the best most positive day ever in response to like that I'm not gonna reply to it I'm not gonna give it any time of day I'm going to move on from that and um, not let it affect me and I went on and had a really good day from that and so I just I wanted to share that with you because sometimes we think that whatever is going on on the outside has to dictate um, the way we feel that day because somebody said this to us or somebody did this to us or whatever. It's not just about social media, but things happen in our lives. And the message here is don't just live your life as a result of what somebody else did to you. You know, you can decide that, hey, that happened, but it doesn't matter. That's not me, that's them. I'm gonna go ahead and go on with my life and have a great day today because that's my decision. So it's within your control, just remember that. Because yeah, that comment just like, it came out of the clear blue and I was like, oh dear Lord. Uh, Milani eyeshadow primer, there's, there's an OG love. Always a love, didn't necessarily think to specifically put this on my list for, for stuff here, but it's just, it's always here. Milani eyeshadow primer is like a pet, you know, <laughs> it's like, always here. You don't really even have to think about it. It's pretty much always just going to be part of things. Okay, I just have two more things that I had on my list of loved products that are not new, and one of them is a little eyeshadow palette. And when I say little, it's like really little. It's my Viseart Petite Pro. This is a really loved product here. This is the original Petite Pro that came out, and I love taking this with me. If I travel anywhere, I feel like it's a really complete little palette. And just here recently, I've come to appreciate it more, and in the spirit of using what I have and seeing the value 
value in my own current collection. Like, I I'm really digging this all over again. I think I'm actually going to start with a dark shade on the outside. This is kind of like a viewer suggested um, tip from that video where I took all your tips. I'm going to go to this rusty, like, mix of dark brown and rust. And I'm going to start patting this on the outer corner. So much intensity. And just get it going there with my brush. I'm not going to blend it yet. But these are just like pigmented little powerhouse shades. And there's different versions. There's one that has like a little bit of plum and green, which I do like that as well. But this is kind of like the standard really great shades that I love the most. So I'm taking my E25 and just going into that crease now. And what I dabbed on the outside is kind of going to become my crease color. But because we put it on the outside first, it has the most intensity right where it should be. And then we just let it sheer, sheer, sheer on in. So there was nothing on this brush when I started engaging it in this look. And look at that. I mean, I could stop there. My goodness. It's a really nice color, guys. But a Petite Pro palette would be a great way to try this brand if you've never tried anything from Viseart. They've, of course, got their larger Grande Pro palettes and uh, more expensive ones. They've got their Theory palettes also that are like six shades. But something I think is so cool about their Petite Pros is that they are so small, but the quality is so totally there. You know, it's not, they didn't skimp on anything with these. All right, so I've got that all blended to where I feel like I'm nicely dark in the outer corner, you know, where the shadow was first placed is where the most intensity goes. And then got it all sheared out, and then I'll just go over the edge with a bare blending brush. And then we do have a white, kind of creamy shade here that I can use to highlight. There we go. And then this is the part where we'll say pick your pop because we have champagne, gold, copper, or purple. Just pick the direction you want to go. My lip is going to be a little bit reddish today, so I think I'm actually just going to go to this lightest shade that has some shimmer. It's all shimmer right there, all matte right there. And I'm just going to dab some of this shade on the inner part of my lid and then maybe layer in like a little bit of the gold. There we go with some gold. Mm, so pretty. I just feel like really smart choices were made with what was put in here because you can take it several very different directions, you know? Easy all matte look available there, but your shimmers can take you in several different places. So I'm just building up that gold a little bit. And we're going to keep it just that easy. I mean, how easy was that? We took the darkest shade first, dabbed it on, sheared it out, and then put your lid pop on there, and you are good to go. I'm not really going to use a liner with this look, but my mascara is going to be IT Cosmetics Superhero. Well, gosh, shouldn't that be on the list, too? That wasn't a new find in 2019. I guess I, for some reason I don't think of it as an older product, but it kind of, it, it's not really new. Okay, you talked me into it. And we're going to get that instant buildup of thickness yet it'll hold my curl. I'll just frame the eye beautifully. I'd really be interested to hear in the comments section like how many of the products mentioned in this video do you already have in your stash and has it been a while since you've used them or are you just you know hardcore loving them all the time too? I got kind of a weird curl on this side of my lashes. They're like curling up really majorly. Maybe I slept on them funny. Have you ever done that? Face buried in the pillow and my lashes are now permanently curled for the day. So super basic yet I think really effective everyday eye look there. And then my final product I'm going to talk about is a lip thing that is nothing new. I was really kind of raving on this the latter part of 2019, but it is the Dolce Vita um, Velvet Matte Lip Pencil from NARS. I love this color. I've got a whole appreciation for this like rosiness that's happening here. I love the texture. While it is matte, it is not too dry, and I'm just a big, big fan. So I'm going to pop this on and it glides on so easy but it is just a velvety feel you know but I kind of love how the intensity is just like right there with it it doesn't get too deep and red just the most beautiful fresh soft red I always think about my college roommate Beth when I think about naturally beautifully pigmented lips because her lips just always looked rosy almost to this level you know without anything added I always thought that was so pretty, and I'm kind of like recreating that with this color.
But this is a sharpenable pencil, so you can resharpen it, get a little bit more pinpointed line if you want, but really it's only going to get so thick. Like, it's pretty rounded off right now for me, and I got an easily, nicely defined lip. But I just feel like that makes the look so finished. It's such a, like, old school product, but I love it. I'm going to top off the look by just adding a little more blush, because that's just how I do. Um, just a little more. Sometimes you just know you need more blush. All right, so ladies, gentlemen, this is my look. My hair is not really done. I just kind of flopped it over there, side part. But I'm not really saying like all of these products need to be used in conjunction with each other at all times. Like it's not so much about the look, but it's about the individual products and doing a look with them was just the best way to describe them to you. But I gotta give major props to the Rimmel Stay Matte Foundation because that coverage is incredible and it's like the cheapest, best coverage you can get. And I've really been wearing it a lot. I've been reaching for that so much and loving just using my beauty blender to tap it all in. That perfect brightening concealer from Maybelline, the pressed powder. Shall I show you my little end tip though with the sandstorm powder here from Rimmel? Just get a little bit on. It's Your brush is never going to pick up too much with this. And then I kind of go over this area right here. And it's like I restore a little bit of coverage. I'm not sure what's going on, but I always look a little more perfected after I do that. It's like magical. Covergirl blush, you know how I feel about that. The little Viseart Petite Pro, like what a little rock star palette. And then the lip. I love the look. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free, as I was talking about video ideas earlier in the video, if you've got any and you want to put them in the comments section down below, I'm kind of rebuilding my video to-do list. So let me know if you have something that needs to be on there. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye.